The facility we're visiting, visiting today is the Clark Meat Center. This is where uh, primary and education and research facility here at Oregon State. The room we're in right now is what we call the slaughtering floor. So this is where all animals come to go ahead and be slaughtered and then eventually end up being cut up into all those different meats that we thoroughly love to enjoy. Everything here is inspected by the USDA uh, pre, uh, post-mortem and anamortem. The first step that would happen is if we were slaughtering a steer, for example, it would come into this chute here, which is what we call the knock box. There's a head restraint, and this is, works on hydraulics. The cattle or the hog or the sheep or whatever it might be have to walk by themselves into the knock box or wherever they're going to go ahead and be stunned. Once they reach into the knock box, when it's a cattle, whether it's a steer or a cow, a cap and bolt gun is used to go ahead and render them senseless. Uh, it just goes right into their, uh, the center of their head. And once that's happened, this door will go ahead and lift up, the bottom will lift out, and then the steer will end up in this particular pen here. If it's a sheep or a hog, they actually are brought in through a smaller door and are put into a smaller pen. Once they're in that pen, if it's a hog, it's actually stunned behind its ear and behind its shoulder with a 60,000 volt uh, type of a gun. And then a sheep is also utilized to be stunned with a cap and bolt gun. After they go ahead and they're rendered senseless, their throat will be cut and then that's when the bleeding out process will begin. Once again, this is all being inspected for safety and for quality purposes by someone with the USDA. Then they're going to go ahead and be shackled up and they're going to go ahead and be brought over uh, to a scale to go ahead and get their live weight. Once the live weight has been taken, their head will be removed, their head will then be inspected. After that, they'll go ahead and go into what we call the cradle and that's where the skinning process and the gutting process will begin. After that's all taken care of, they'll go ahead and move to another scale and that's where they'll go ahead and actually be rinsed. Uh, part of uh, the program here is a HACCP program. They're rinsed with a vinegar water solution and then they're also once again inspected. There's another weight taken which we would call the hot carcass weight and then they'll go ahead and move on into the drip cooler. So the, if you notice the orange tracks at the top of the, the ceiling here, that's how all carcasses are moved. So once they're hoisted up, they can actually be moved anywhere in the facility. It just makes it that much easier for the employees here to move carcasses around. What we have here is where hogs are actually brought once they've gone through the, um, the bleeding out phase. They're placed into this uh, bath here. It's actually scalding hot. So it's called a scalder, they're in here, and then they go ahead and get lifted into this machine here, which is what we call a de-herring machine. Because hogs uh, aren't usually skinned, like cattle or sheep would be, so they have to go into the de-herring machine to go ahead and get rid of any hair that might be on their body. So after carcasses are slaughtered, they then go ahead and move into this cooler, which we call the drip cooler. They hang in here for 24 to 48 hours, and if there's any excess blood, that's where this will go, blood will go ahead and be dispensed. Uh, the carcasses have to come in here and cool below 42 degrees before moving on to the next cooler. This is just a cooler that we have here at the meat lab. Uh, it's basically used for aging purposes. Carcasses have to be aged for a certain time, anywhere from 7 to 10 days. These big carcasses you see here are the size of a beef. Uh, they're split between the 11th and the 12th rib. And this is also where grading takes place. So yield grading and quality grading of beef carcasses, sheep carcasses, and swine carcasses. This carcass here is actually of a pig. Uh, as you can see, each of the beef carcasses has been split in half. Uh, it's just an easier way for the employees here to handle the carcasses themselves. Uh, if you notice, uh, when you look at the ribeye area of each of the carcasses, you'll see some little white flecks of fat. The white flecks of fat are what we call marbling. Marbling is what adds tenderness and flavor and juiciness to all of our meats. Also on the carcasses are a stamp. Everything here is inspected by the federal government and receives a stamp in order for it to go ahead and be processed and then to be sold. The room we're in now is what we would call the processing floor. So this is where all of the meat is cut up. Sanitation is really important in here. After they've uh, used the processing floor, everything is rinsed with 180 degree water. It's then foamed down with a foaming agent to go ahead and kill any bacteria or anything that might have uh, gotten on the equipment. It's then rinsed again. Everything in here is as sterile as it possibly can be before processing begins again. 
There's lots of different equipment in here. There's a slicer, an emulsifier. Everything here is vacuum sealed, so there's a vacuum sealer, a vacuum stuffer. There's also a stuffing machine and lots of other equipment that they use to go ahead and process different meats. The room we're in now is what we would call the smokehouse. This is where all meat is smoked. Uh, there's a wood chipper over here that we place the wood chips in. They go ahead and transition into the smokehouse, and then that's how we get that smoky flavor in our meat. Different meats that they smoke here are turkeys, hams, jerky, bacon, and different types of sausages. Everything that is smoked has to have um, a recording of when it was placed in the smoker and how long it was actually cooked. So this little diagram here is what's placed in the Enviro pack. And once the meat has been placed in, the start time will go ahead and be recorded. It'll record the temperature at all times that's, uh, as the meat's being smoked and then the time it's actually taken out. Also in here is just a couple of coolers where they keep their retail products and their wholesale products. 